judging by the stench, I'd say the animals at the ranch are all grown now. Have you guys checked your equipment lately? than before. this thing. I see plenty of ruins around here, too. It must have been a big town bustling with people back in the day. For crown contest participants, places such as these are but vectors for the astral energy they pursue. Similar to that windmill, for instance. Take this! Oh, that freaking does it! Can you take it? 
Barely a blip on our radar. Ah, guess I misread the landing. The trash. Stay calm. I shall provide assistance. Demon Prepare to be seen in the fleet of foot. Actually, the house found is not appropriate. Let's talk in your doing. Dragon Storm! Watch this! On your turn! Get toasty! Burn strike! This could be useful. Victory for the ages. Just 
dispose of the trap. Rising Wyvern! Everlasting! Rising Dragon! Never attack! Turbo Demon Fang! Radiant Burn! Here! Uh, I'm out! I'm no out! Dragon Annihilation. Swarm! Nasty airborne scoundrel! Sounds like a job for yours truly! Dragon Swarm! Freeze Lancer! Damn it, you beat me to it. Gotta be quick, or I'll take them all myself. Oh, like hell, you do it. Astral energy. Say no more. Nice. No scratches on my shield or my armor. for some good weapon crafting material. Judging by the stench, I'd say the animals at the ranch are all grown now. Have you guys checked your equipment lately? I wonder what we'll find out there this time. Most likely Zoogles, I would reckon. I mean, other than them. Here I go! 
Look who's in a bright and shiny mood. I hate camping out. I'm impressed how well balanced this thing is. The vermilion vegetation certainly gives this realm a distinct, if somber, ambiance. Seems like there's lots of fruit and plants that we can eat. I also can't help but notice the ceaseless howling of the wind. It should be easy to dry our laundry out here. I can't tell if these two are actually having a conversation or what. No, Halim, your spare bracers were getting dirty, so I polished them up along with the rest of your equipment. Why, thank you, Kisara. I greatly appreciate that. Maybe it's just my imagination, but you sure seem to fuss over Dohalim a whole lot, Kisara. It is a little strange. Almost like you're still in his service. Really? That's certainly not my intention. Besides, he's not the only one I'm like that with. Hey, Law? I saw your clothes were starting to get holes in them, so I stitched them back up for you. Oh, wow! Thanks, Kisara. Point taken. Do you just like looking after people? I wouldn't go so far as to say I like it, but I get anxious if I don't. I'd always like to help if I can. It comes naturally to me. Back in the day, Miguel and I used to look after the younger kids a lot, so that's probably where it comes from. He taught me everything I know, and I mean everything. How to cook with wild plants, how to sew clothes so they'll last. Without him, we never would have been able to survive. However, you're not a lord anymore, Dohalim. You need to get used to the idea that people aren't just going to wait on you hand and foot. Yes, you're absolutely right. I'm ashamed to admit that I felt no qualms about her doing all that for me. As both a Renan and especially as a Lord, one becomes too accustomed to those beneath you tending to your every need, both Renans and Danans alike. Sure, that's how all you Renans are probably raised. But just to be clear, we're not your servants, Dohalim. Got that? Absolutely. Moments such as this provide me with ample opportunity to confront my unease. It is difficult to tend with my own motivations. What do you mean? The truth of the matter is that my espousal of coexistence in Menencia hardly came from an idealistic place. That instinctive unease I feel deep within serves as a reminder for what it is that I, that all of us here, fight for. Don't be so hard on yourself. No one's going to abandon you if you aren't always perfect. Looking at her now, I think she's more like his mom than his servant. Hmm. What's up, Kisara? You look concerned. Uh, oh, no, it's just... I'm looking at our finances, and they seem to have taken a nosedive. 
I don't remember us making any big purchases, though. Ah, that may be because I borrowed a small amount to purchase something the other day. I don't think you can call spending more than half of our money a small amount. Half? Go, Halim, what the hell did you buy? As it so happens, I came upon a rather special object that I've long been searching for. Are you talking about that junk? Uh, I mean, that uh, unique-looking trinket you're holding? Whoa, is that a... Indeed. It is a lost artifact from ancient Danon times. Most likely, it was used for some sort of rite or ritual. Ever since we Renans conquered Dana, such objects have been disappearing. I simply want to do my part to help preserve both our people's storied histories. Well, if it's to preserve Danon history, then I guess we can maybe look the other way. Just this once? I don't know. Why spend money on something that won't even keep us fed? More to the point, we all contribute to that money. I don't like the thought of anyone dipping into it without saying anything. You must understand. Had I let that opportunity pass me by, I'd never have come across this item again. Dohalim, maybe no one taught you that money doesn't grow on trees. I may have been a lord, but I realize that much. It's not enough to simply realize it. You have to internalize the concept too. Even after all this time, you still have no real sense of money. Our funds aren't your personal wallet. We camp outside and eat grass for dinner to try and stretch every last gold we have. You never know when we may need it. Uh, I don't think we're so poor that we have to eat grass or anything. Shut up, Alfin. Shutting. Let's just agree to not spend too much or be too thrifty for our own good. Alfin, your blazing sword draws its power from Xion's Fire Master Core, right? So I'm told. Then why don't you use yours, Dohalim? You mean my Earth Master Core, yes? Yeah, I mean, you still carry it around with you, don't you? I do. Each Master Core contains the astral energy harvested from Dan and slaves over the course of the last three centuries. Though only a select few qualified people, namely the Lords, can wield them. They nevertheless hold too much power to simply abandon. If only the Lords are supposed to be able to use them, how come Alfin and Xion can use theirs? That may be because Xion has embedded the Fire Master Core within her body, something which wouldn't have occurred under normal circumstances. Okay, but why do you still carry yours around? Just as Danon see Master Cores as symbols of the lives and resources robbed from them, so, too, do I view mine as a symbol of our lasting sins. The pain and agony wrought upon this world by my predecessors, as well as the injustice enabled by my own inaction, are all housed within my Master Core. It is a testament of all that I have done wrong. It cannot ever be used again, nor fall back into the wrong hands. <sighs> <sighs> Dohalim. You didn't differentiate between the deaths of Danans and the deaths of Renans. Danans and Renans both spill blood and languish in agony all the same. I just couldn't bear to hear it any longer. That's all. Little late for that. Mmm, good food is the best kind of magic. Kisara, let's talk for a bit. Maintaining your shield? It's becoming a familiar sight. Miguel was the one who taught me how to maintain my equipment after I first joined the Guard. Now, it's just a part of my routine. Your brother always seems to come up whenever I talk to you. That's because we had no other relatives. So it was just the two of us growing up. He was my idol. The one I looked up to and wanted to be like. When I became a guardsman, Lagiel wasn't too pleased to see me at first. It was Megal who really welcomed me aboard. Lagiel? Oh, right. She was Megal's second in the Gold Dust Cats, wasn't she? That's right. She's always been a very critical and down-to-earth person. 
In other words, the complete opposite of a dreamer like me. You're more an idealist than some pie-in-the-sky dreamer. Even so, that's my brother's doing. He'd never let me stop seeing a brighter world. He always did what he could to keep me smiling and happy. You must have meant a lot to him. He wasn't just kind, either. He always worked so hard to set an example for me and everyone else around him. <laughs> he was a true big brother. So much so that when he thought I was asleep, he'd slip out of the house to go training on the outskirts of town. You seem to know a lot about it. That's because I only pretended to be asleep and would follow after him. Hmm. You know what? I'm at a good stopping point with my shield. If you've got time, how about I tell you a couple more Migal stories? I guess I'd better get comfortable. I'll take watch tonight. It's okay. Before we go, do you guys have everything?